The story of West Belfast's First World War is inextricably linked to the Troubles and to contemporary politics. Just look at the gable ends of shops and houses. This Ulster Volunteer Force mural from the Shankill tells a story in which service in the pre-war UVF continues directly to wartime service in the 9th Royal Irish Rifles, especially on the Somme in 1916, and then later involvement in the Troubles era paramilitary UVF. This mural from the Falls shows that for Irish Republicans, the key moment from 1914-18 is 1916 and specifically the Easter Rising. These images still dominate local views of the war. But there is another story about the war which has been told since the mid to late 1980s. Then, historians and journalists began to look for hidden service. Much was learned about men south of the border. A great deal was discovered about service by Irish nationalists in the 16th Irish Division. In my book Belfast Boys, I told the story of men from across West Belfast, including those who served in the 36th Ulster and 16th Irish Divisions. But those volunteers were the tip of an iceberg. I found that around 8,500 men from across West Belfast had served in the British forces during the war. Due to many records being lost in the London Blitz of 1940, I estimate that around 12,000 actually served. I found over 6,000 men from the Shankill, which means that there were probably actually around 9,000 who served. Of these, over 1,300 Shankill men were killed and over 600 from the Falls area which was then about half the population of the Shankill. Who were these men? Certainly in many cases they were in the well-known units, such as the Unionist 9th Royal Irish Rifles or the Nationalist 6th Connaught Rangers. But much service took place outside the well-known volunteer divisions and far beyond the well-known battles. 12% of the Shankill's fatalities occurred on the Somme on the 1st and 2nd of July 1916, an enormous loss on just two days of the war. But what of the other 88%? A few case studies point to some of this service. Take those who'd been in the UVF as part of a lost and surprising story. Because many UVF members were also army reservists, they did not join the 36th Division when it was formed in September 1914, having already been called up to regular battalions of the British Army. The first West Belfast UVF member killed in action on the 22nd of October 1914 was Frank Todd of No. 5 March Street, serving in the 1st Royal Irish Fusiliers. Two men killed at different points in the 2nd Royal Irish Rifles would have found themselves on opposing sides had a feared civil war broken out over home rule. Michael McGiven came from Merrion Street in the Falls, close to today's Gibson Street. He lost his life on the Western Front in December 1914. Pre-war, he had been an Irish volunteer. William Shearer came from 7th Street in the Shankill. He was killed on the Western Front in September 1915. Shearer was an ex-UVF man, yet both he and McGiven died serving in the same battalion. Finally, Thomas Seeds, just 17 when he lost his life, another former UVF member from 13 Crosby Street, but killed well before the Battle of the Somme in August 1915, serving at Gallipoli in the 1st Royal Inniskillen Fusiliers. So 1916, whether the Somme or the Easter Rising, is central to identities in Belfast today. That's no surprise and is entirely understandable, but it's important to contextualise and to realise that there was a war well beyond that year. 1914, 1915, 1917 and 1918 accounted for the bulk of military losses from West Belfast. <laughs> 